Hey folks, it's Brian, and I'm gonna move that back to its regular home. But not in any of the ways that you just saw me fake try. Um, I figured I'd try something a little more dramatic uh, with my open. Um, so, if you like it, let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoy the video, hit, hit that thumbs up button. If you wanna see more of my videos, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you find out when I release videos. So, um, I'm gonna use this shop crane and there's a video about building that in my video list to move this 1942 Monarch 14C30 lathe. Um, so you can see here it is a 14C with an actual swing of 16 and a half inch, 30 inch between centers, built in, oh, sorry, 1941. So this is a war lathe made by Monarch uh, Tool Company and it's been around the block it's a great, great machine, and it's an honor for me to own it, and eventually one day I'll learn to use it. Um, so that's going to be a whole other series of videos. Um, and I'm getting to that point. Um, so anyway, uh, the way this works is we've got a uh, lifting sling that's rated for twice the weight of the, the lathe around the, the it goes past here, and then we're using blocks to pick it up by the ways. That keeps the stress off the spindle. Spindle bearings are not rated to pick the machine up. And you can see it from here. And then we're using rated hardware. Um, again, it's it's tagged, all legitimate lifting hardware. And then we're using jacks. The jacks are rated for three tons a piece, so 12,000 pounds capacity on the jacks. The beam engineering wise, uh, it's rated for 10,000 pounds, even though this is a 5,000 pound load. And then this is heavy wall thick tubing. You can see here it's quarter inch thick tubing. One slides into the other. Um, one of the things that's unique about this crane, it's designed to be taken apart, put in a box truck, drive several hours away, put back together. It was designed to pick this up to get a skid under it so I could load it into a truck. And then when I got here to be able to take it off the skid. Now, the reality is I've hung on to the crane. I've stored it outside because I am just a little bit tight on space in my workshop. Um, I am in the process of painting the workshop floor. It looks fantastic. Unfortunately, I ran out of paint at the end and the new paint, which is much younger, does not. There's a slight shade mismatch, so I'm gonna end up putting another coat on the other two thirds of it. Shit happens. Um, so anyway, this is about lifting this lathe. This is really quick. Um, it's already rigged. So it is actually really fast. So I want it to go that way. So I'm gonna lift it from the uh, this side first. I'm gonna get this piece of plywood out of my way. Good idea to pre-position the wheels in the direction you want it to go. There is not a lot of caster, and this is a And we'll just kind of roll it over. 
if something horrible was to happen and it collapsed, it would just drop the package to the floor. So it's not a big, it wouldn't be a big deal. Don't have a whole lot of caster in these wheels, so it makes it difficult to turn them. Um, at this point, I need to figure out exactly where I want this. I think I want it to be tighter than that. You can also use this. That's about right. It is not necessary to do what I just did. I'm just doing it because I'm trying to wiggle it closer. Um, there are other ways to move it closer. I want to be able to just barely get behind this, which is kind of where I'm at right now. Um, and what I'm debating is how much more I could get back here, how much closer it needs to be. I think this is it. Um, you know, space is precious in this shop, so I don't want to leave any of it unattended. And I think that's about as close as it, it needs to go. So we're going to go ahead and start setting it down. And setting it down is going to be a little different from last time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower it a little bit until I get contact. Because I've got partial contact. I can still maneuver it. And this allows me to adjust it. Um, it's really impressive that I have this much fidelity with a 5,000 pound object. move again so I'm going to let the inside down. just some, you know, I mean, this is a shop-made tool, so um, the hydraulic ram jacks are held captive at all times. Good enough, that one's being a little sticky. Doesn't really matter. Pair comes off. And the lifting's 
shackle comes off. Don't know where these will get used again, but I do keep these inside. And very conspicuously does not have the rating stamped on it, which is really strange, but it's rated for 5,000 pounds. So then at this point, this just rolls away. And that's really the beauty of this gantry crane design. That's what it is designed for. It's designed to work in a home garage where I don't have 10, 12, 14 feet. And it's designed to have a substantial margin of safety on the design of it. I, I hesitate to use the word engineering, but you know, in the truest sense, it is an engineered, um, it, it is an engineered device. I engineered it. Uh, and that's okay. I'm not a classically trained engineer, but clearly I might know a thing or two. Um, you know, if you choose to build one of these, you do so at your own risk. Um, and you need to make the appropriate judgments and use material that you think is at least strong enough to meet your needs. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. Have a great day.